So even though I set my stop up uh, very straight in the uh, vertical bandsaw, I, as you can see, I didn't get as good of a cut as I was hoping for. So maybe I'll, I'll have to find a better setup next time I decide to split a thinner piece of material in half uh, long ways like this. Um, I think there could be some flex in the bandsaw blade or maybe I just wasn't holding it up against the stop as straight as I thought I was. But this is where we're at. So not the most ideal, but this actually brings up an interesting thing you can think through is if you want to mill your cut sides flat, how can you do that when you have such a thin area to grab? Now at the thinnest right here, this piece is a little bit thicker, so we'll set it off to the side. At the thinnest with the uh, calipers, it is coming out to just under 175 thousandths, so a little less than 3 sixteenths of an inch. But for this purpose, uh, I could go as, as thin as an uh, eighth of an inch, so that should be fine. Now I could grab a little bit less than eighth of an inch down here, but the, it's, the material is slightly rounded, slightly chamfered on the side. So what I'm gonna do is I just grabbed a piece of steel line around that already had a couple drilled and tapped holes. So this is dead space for the, um, the I'll, cut, I'll just end up milling that, those sections out. But before I do mill those out, I'm gonna go ahead and drill through holes through these four spots. I could only do two if I want, and I'll line them up. I'll have to drill some matching drilled and tap holes into this piece, and I'll actually just bolt my, um, my aluminum piece that I'm trying to mill flat to the steel piece, and I'll grab the steel piece in the vise of the mill that way, and I'll have to do a little, um, I believe you call it counter boring, so I'll do a through hole, and then I'll counterbore the outside so that the bolt that I secure through the aluminum piece to the steel piece will sit lower than the area that I'm gonna be milling off so I don't actually end up milling off the bolt head because I'm gonna to wanna to do this again for the other piece. So let's get going on that. So we got the one piece grabbed in the vise and it's sitting on a three quarter parallel and an inch and inch parallel. So I can grab it up near the top so I can see what I'm doing up here. And I got my little center countersink with a fine tip on the end. And I've lined it up with that center punch that I punched out in the material beforehand. So I took a scribe, I scribed a diagonal line this way, a diagonal line that way, and then I felt the center of the two diagonal lines with my punch, held my punch there, hit it with a hammer, Got my punch mark, as you can see, I've lined it up with the countersink. And then I will, you don't have to do this on small holes, but it's just good practice. You wanna lock the table left and right, and then lock it in and out. So that when you're drilling your through hole, you know, the table's not gonna move around on you and that you're gonna be nice and centered up, especially if you're doing something with a real close tolerance. Got the countersink out of the drill truck, so now I'll put in my. This is a number seven drill, and this is the uh, correct drill. If you were going to tap quarter twenty inch threads, which I will be doing in you know, this material here. All right, let's drill the first hole. Well, actually, you know what? Just since we're showing you guys all the correct ways to do stuff, going with your center drill first drill a little pilot hole. That way your drill won't walk on you and you know everything's on center. All right, so we'll go around and tighten it in three different positions evenly. Just going a little bit at a time. And now we're ready. Safety glass is on and let's go.
pilot hole drill. <clears throat> so I'll take the center drill of the truck and now here we go with the number seven drill. Yeah, drill's definitely dull. So we're gonna have to see if we can sharpen that. Maybe on this side. There you go. Okay, so it's dull. We're gonna try to sharpen up. If I just touch with my finger, it can not even poke at me at all. See if that helped out at all. Okay, well that's a win for me because it actually sharpened up uh, enough to cut through the aluminum, which is not saying much, it's just aluminum, but I'll take it. You know, always trying to get my skills up as I uh, get through the apprentice phase of being a machinist. I'll, again, I'll take it. So, we got the one hole drilled out. I'm gonna put the countersink back in and I will countersink. Well, I'm gonna actually countersink the other side because I'm gonna drill and tap this and then when I put the steel plate underneath it, the bolt is gonna go from the bottom of the steel plate up through, so the end of the bolt is gonna be just slightly into the aluminum piece, so that way, when I mill it flat, actually, you know what, this is the right side. Yeah, because this, this side, the steel plate will be against this side, and then when it's flipped over, grabbing the steel piece, um, the other side, I'll be milling, obviously. So I can go ahead and countersink this and then um, I'm not going to tap it yet and I'll show you why. <clears throat> so normally you want to run the countersink real slow about 90, 100 RPM in the uh, either in the lathe or in the mill. but. Just aluminum and just touching it real quick so it's not too big of a deal. So now I will unlock the table on the, um, the uh, side to side. I'll keep the in and out locked because I'm not gonna move that. I'm just gonna crank the table over this way so that I can touch up the tip of the countersink into the second area where I'm gonna have a drilled and tapped hole. over a little bit more so my punch marks aren't perfectly lined up with each other on the in and out but that's okay because this will be good enough right there I just need to make sure it's lined up this way and I can go at it again so that way both holes are in in line with each other 
So again, put in the center drill and you know the rest. Also a quick note, whenever you're milling or drilling through a hole in a piece of material that you have set up in the, in the milling machine or in the vise, generally you'll have parallels underneath the material. So if you're drilling too close to, the, um, to either, either vise jaw, make sure you're not gonna go through the parallel because then you wanna make, you might instead wanna set up blocks that sit on the sides to still hold the material up as far as you need, but you can still drill your through hole and not have to worry about drilling into the uh, parallel. And of course, don't, um, if you, especially if you have an end mill, make sure it's not gonna touch or cut into your vice jaws. Um, unfortunately, someone, I'm not gonna name any names, but they already uh, cut a, uh, accidentally cut about 10 thousandths off this uh, half inch section all the way down this jaw, but what are you gonna do? It's like those, um, public electric scooters and electric bikes to rent. Like people just destroy those. And it's like any, anything that's public use, you can expect uh, to just get mangled up and, and damaged and not taken care of. But here we are, at least this stuff still works. Yeah, I was working in the city a couple years ago and I literally saw someone park an electric, uh, I think it was a lime scooter, and then they they, they kind of like, they, they put it on the grass instead of the sidewalk, so the grass was, the ground was uneven, and they just let it fall right over. <laughs> I happened to be in the, the company truck. I, I was just laughing to myself. It's just, people in the city are, it's, if you like the people watch, go, go, go to the city. It's, you see all kinds of sights and sounds, and the people watching never, fails to disappoint and when I took that 2020 Shelby GT350 out to you know Sperryville area Skyline Drive I was just amazed that the the level of common sense especially among the drivers on more rural areas it just ramps up in like by a lot there's way more common sense with people out in rural areas compared to cities <laughs> We got our we got our two through holes now I'm not going to uh, run the tap through the quarter 20 tap through just yet because I'm gonna lay this piece over the steel piece and just drill uh, two quick little pilot holes with these over the steel piece so I can get my through holes done in the um, in the steel piece and have those lined up with these So I just deburred the other side, ran the countersink slightly against the burrs that were sticking up off the other side. So what I can do is I can actually take my little Milwaukee Inksole fine tip uh, Sharpie. And when I stick it through, I don't know if you can see that, but just the very, very tip of it just barely sticks through the other side. So it actually works out great. So I, what I can do is just touch that to two points here on my material, like maybe here and here. And just for good measure, I'll make sure the, the one end is, is squared up against the material. So that way when it's, when I'm grabbing it, when I'm running the, uh, the fly cutter over top, then the material will be, will be straight as well. So it won't be cocked like that. While, while the steel piece is straight, this won't be cocked like that or something like that. Alright, so I'll just line up my punch as best I can with my Sharpie marks. Again, it doesn't have to be extremely precise, just good enough. There's one. I went out a little hard at pressing the Sharpie against the material, kind of flattened and took away the fine point of the Sharpie. So, that sucks. Good thing I have more though. Okay, that mark looks good. If you want to move your center punch mark slightly to, if it's slightly off of whatever area you're trying to punch at, you can actually cock the center punch at whatever, whichever way you're trying to push your, um, your center punch mark into the material. But 
In this case, we're good to go, but just a nice little neat trick to keep in mind. I'm gonna do this one again because the second strike didn't even feel like it quite did anything. Okay, that feels better. So now, let's see where's all my stuff at here. Now I have a, um, it's uh, 265,000, so I think it's 1764 to drill bit. So this will just be my through hole so that the quarter inch bolt can go right through this material. And then I can actually go back now and run a tap, quarter, quarter 20 tap through here to make threads into the aluminum piece. And with the through hole, bolt it up together and then mill off the top side and make it flat. All right, so now that we got a new piece of material in here, always remember if you're gonna go line it up, you're gonna wanna take the table loose both ways because you don't want to crank on the table especially if it has a power feed this one doesn't but at the old shop we had a power feed and it was a plastic gear and it was kind of a fuse it would strip out the teeth on the plastic gear if you tried to power feed with the table locked so just keep that in mind all right centered up there i'll lock the table in both positions on both axes, if you will. Take out the countersink, put in the center drill, and we're off to the races. I was supposed to go to a NASCAR race today, but my plans changed, unfortunately, so I'm gonna have to catch one this summer. And what I'm trying to do is line up a, another 30-day Carmex uh, car test out and within that 30 days also go down to this NASCAR race because I think that would just be perfect, wouldn't you agree? We actually saw this 1764 drill bit uh, walking towards the end of it and I have it as far up in the chuck as I can without clamping on the actual um, drill portions of the drill bit so that's all the more importance of lining everything up going in with the drilling a pilot hole with your center drill first that way you have a pilot hole that the, even a, a walking drill bit can center itself up into And now that I think about it, what I should have done is I should have drilled and tapped these while they were in each setting well, where the table was because, you know, when I, th I only thought of the stick and the Sharpie through the material after the fact, I was going to actually try to line it up, clamp the two together and drill a, just like a little pilot hole through the aluminum piece into the steel piece so that they would line up with each other. But turns out I thought of another way. So. Each and every step is critical and usually has to be done in a very specific order, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> I say keep that in mind as if, like, y'all have uh, hobby, hobby machine shops in your garage or something. But we're just, uh, this is the very, very early um, videos on me machining, so I'm figuring it all out, the commentary as we go along. Do a countersink hole here. Just a slight one, so. I'll actually end up turning the RPMs way down for this one since I'm going into steel. Oh 
right, it's down just under 100. All right, perfect. And I'll unlock the table and I'll crank her back over this way. And then this just show you speeding up and slowing down the, the RPM of the um, of the motor here. So when I when I kick it on, you got the adjustment handle right here. And as you crank it out this way, that's what I was drilling at. I could have drilled a little higher, but we're on, just on the turtle speed because we will have the the end mill in there later. And with the end mill, depending on the size of the end mill, I want to be somewhere around 400, high 300s. Um, we got the rabbit speed. If you have really, really t small drill bits, you can, uh, they drill a lot better at higher speeds. So this, uh, at the high end, it's like 3600, but on the low end, it's like 900 on rabbit speed. And you would kick this lever up to high, but then you'd have to kick over your speed range from low over to high. So now to do these tapped holes that I should have already done, like I said, um, I'm just lining up, lining up the holes with the uh, drill truck with the, with the countersink. So I got it pretty close. Now I'll admit it, I'm younger than most of my coworkers. I used to be stubborn. I used to put the uh, tap in there, and my tap has a comes to a point on the end. Well, the ones that don't, the ones that have a divot, I'd put the tap in and I'd take the countersink and I'd touch it in the divot and I'd hold it in there and they kept trying to tell me that the you'd dole out the um, the tip of the countersink because it's a you know one's a soft material or one's a softer material one's a harder material and the harder material material of the tap is gonna wear out the, the sharp tip of the countersink and it took me a while but finally I got over my stubbornness and listened so always listen to the older guys because they always have stuff to teach you. You never, ever stop learning. <clears throat> I mean, I'm at, I'm in almost, uh, actually next month, May will be year six, the start of year six. So I've learned quite a bit, but can't get a chip on my shoulder, I can't get an ego because there's so much I need to learn. I still need to dive into the machinist handbooks that a retired machinist gave me, which was um, probably one of the best gifts for, you know, career-wise. So so now, what I do from now on is I, got, I took this piece of steel, I've drilled a center drill in there, on, into the, well, after I faced it, drill, drill a center drill hole, pilot hole into one end, and then on my taps that come to a tip, I just uh, simply hold this down over the tip so that my tap is nice and straight. And then I start cranking with the adjustable. Because I, uh, you could use a tap handle, but this is, this gets it, uh, the tap straight in the hole every single time. But first, of course, you're gonna wanna use some cutting fluid, so I'll put some on the tap. Now we can get jiggy with it. We're just going through aluminum, so not, not a whole lot of worries here. If I was going through stainless, I would have used the drill that I used before the tap. I would have actually gone a little bit bigger than a number seven drill, because that's 201 thousandths. For this quarter 20 tap it would have gone more like maybe even up to 213 because drill or tapping through stainless is it's it's very very difficult tedious and you never want to break a tap off into the material that would that just uh, set you back kind of ruin your day too unless you can get the tap out you get that tap out, you can maybe save the, the uh, happiness of the day. I could power tap, but I don't want to jinx it. Okay, so we're through now. All right. 
bring the troll truck back up. Ladies and gentlemen, we got one hole tapped. We're getting closer to all this setup just so we can mill down our piece flat. If only we had two 316 3 pieces of aluminum in this uh, length and width of starts, and we would have been we would have been golden. We would have been way past this. But what do you know? Another teachable moment for YouTube. So many things to learn. Why not? Always take some compressed air below the chips off the tap before you get started on the next hole. give this piece a little tight and we don't need to go hog wild on it just to lightly put some pressure on the tap hold it in place and let's get to tapping and we're free All right, we'll clean up the hole and then we'll test fit or we'll, we'll try out our bolt oh look at that threads in nicely. I'll take it. So, now we can uh, loosen up the vise, take our material out. So we got two tapped holes. Now there's going to be, we don't really care about the burr on the other side because we're going to take the fly cutter over this anyways, or if we had a wide enough end mill, but it'll probably end up being the fly cutter. And now for the exciting part, we can mate the two in a happy marriage because no no marriage ever fails did you guys know that well i guess my parents did you whoops <laughs> unfortunately i think it uh messed my sister up a little bit more because uh she was how old was she she was about six when things started to go down i was about 12. Feel like she hit her worse than me for sure. I'm gonna need to run a countersink clear, or I could just clean up these burrs on the, the yellow wheel real quick. Why don't I take you over there since you haven't seen it yet? This is it right here. Kick your switch on. Very careful, it spins very fast. You don't want to uh, take any skin, layers of skin off your fingers. Ask me how I know. Those do look better. Took the burrs off nice and smooth. And now, looks like our holes do in fact line up. You can see my finger behind each hole. So let's go ahead and try it. One bolt in, and here goes the other. Look at that. Don't you love it when things work? And then it's just aluminum, so I won't get the impact. I'll just go nice and tight with the adjustable. I don't want to strip out my threads, because they're only in there maybe two threads. If you only can uh, start a bolt into a piece and it's only get grabbing one thread, there's a chance you just rip the threads out, so be very careful. Especially working on cars or something old and rusty. Okay, so as you can see, we now have our aluminum piece held down, secured down to the steel piece, which we will now grab on the chuck. I'll swap the drill chuck out for the, the uh, fly cutter, and we will mill this face flat. I'm excited. And as you can see, the bolts are in there, but they're deep down far enough that I should be able to get this flat before I accidentally start to mill into the uh, ends of the bolts. Now this time, since we're getting more precise, 
um, you can see that these uh, parallels are moving around. So in order to get those to, to, to be uh, pretty firm and in place, I'm gonna actually smack the top of the material with the uh, soft hammer. Let me, let me go ahead and take out the uh, drill truck first. So that I have room to swing at it. Okay, so you can't see it, but these parallels right here aren't moving anymore. It's just the ones on the other side. And look at that. These are nice and firm too, I'll take it. All right, so let's get, grab the fly cutter. I'm gonna move this stuff out because it's gonna make a lot of chips and you get a bunch of chips on your rag then your rag will now scratch anything you try to wipe on. Okay, check it out. Here's the fly cutter. This one has five uh, cutting edges, cutting tips. And they look a little worse for wear but we're just going through aluminum and you don't wanna to take too much at a time. So it will be a little bit of a lengthy process, but we're gonna make sure we do it right so we don't um, have any issues. And also, you're gonna to wanna to crank the table up. You don't wanna drop the, uh, so that you, know, you have all that sticking out. You wanna have the flywheel up close and then bring the table up close to it. So that way you won't get a lot of chatter or as much chatter and as much play everything will be more solid <clears throat> what is that piece called that comes down is it it's not the compound it's the it's the quill i think it's the quill again i need to read my machinist handbook i know i'll get to it <clears throat> So since this section's higher up, raised up more, we're gonna start over here. Work on that. And the fly cutter, you want the fly cutter to be wider than the material that you're facing. And you wanna straddle so that the fly cutter, each side of the fly cutter hangs over either side of the material. Okay, that's looking good. And then you want your speed. I'm gonna go try around 200, see how that feels. You don't want to go too fast with the fly car. The end mills, which you'll see later, more like 360, 400, but this we're going to kick down to 200. barely touching so we're gonna crank her over. Well, I guess the high spot was actually towards the in the center of those of those five cutting tips. Good to know. And I want to show you all this real quick so since we have the quill all the way up now we're gonna be feeding in by the thousands thousandths of an inch so we're at, and this doesn't have to be, we don't have to be pretty, we don't have to measure anything out with this. We just have to keep going consistently. So it's at about, uh, here's 60 on the dial, 70. So our line is at 68. So we're going to try 12, 17, 18, 19, uh, about 20 thousandths at first. Let's see how that does. And we'll keep going and 20,000 increments, and if it if it feels good on the table, not too much vibration through the vise, then I might kick it up to 30 thousandths.
can see we're not touching any more of the material over here. So I'll run it back out, bring the table up a hair more, and go again. about like for example we'll have key stock sometimes if we're uh, if we need to mill down a key to fit in a, in a more unexpected shallow keyway um, or if you're working on another piece of material where you're you're you have something let's say it's a half inch thick and you want to mill it down to a quarter inch thick you want to make sure you take light cuts because you and because this happened to me which what I learned if you take too heavy of a cuts at a time if the thinner your piece gets it'll actually start to warp um, mine is bolted down so it should be better than if I just had the piece grabbed in the vise, because it may start to warp either way. Um, but just something that I have learned. Fairly well, I still got a little bit of ways to go. I feel like I maybe have about 30 more thousand, so I start touching the other section of the piece. So let's keep doing 20 thousand at a time. I don't want to press my luck. cool so I I figured correctly that it was the low point was here and the piece starts to ramp back up slightly so as you can see it does start to cut it out this section so we'll run it back and then we'll just feed another 20 and keep going Chips out of the way and take a look. Nope, not actually not quite. It was just chattering a little, little bit more than usual right around this area, but we're still good. You can see we're so close. We just have this one little section here to to touch with the fly cutter. So we'll bring it back. We'll take a ten thousandths this time. We're so close. That's all we may need. I, get a, I want to get you a different angle right there. Let's see how that works. Ooh, not quite. I can see it already. We didn't quite hit it right there. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so... Just to show you guys, this whole time I've been hand feeding it because we don't have a power feed. Well, you know we did off the uh, digital readout, but it hasn't worked in a while. It has like some sort of uh, floppy disk in there that we, it was working for a while and then we might have had to, like a power outage or something and it hasn't worked since. So I've just been hand feeding it, trying to keep it consistent with my speed of my feed. But this one little section here, I think another 10,000, so we should be good to go. Alright, 
that's a wrap. Load the chips out. I want to thank you guys for watching. We're going to end it here. We'll call this part one. I'll have part two out to you when I can. I just want to, last thing I want to check is to see if the piece is warped, which it doesn't appear to be. I think if I was just, like I say, grabbing it in the vise, it could be warped, but because we actually bolted it in two places to the steel piece that we did grab in the vise, everything's looking Gucci. Everything's looking good. All right, so that's piece one done. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna wanna measure the thickness of it real quick with the caliper. We got our zero to one mic, so I'll... The trick I found is to actually roll this on your arm. That's what uh, Mr. Michael Cut taught me. Learned so much around here. Get it nice and close. You can. Let me actually pick the phone up. You can. Uh, you can click the top. You hear that? It makes a little clicky noise, and that's how you know you got a good uh, read on it. We'll pull over the burr. Yes, it will. Okay, so looking at it, we are looking at 150 thousandths. Okay, that's actually more than I was I was expecting, like 125, about an eighth inch thick. We're actually a little bit over that at 100, almost 151 thousandths, which is a little less than 3 sixteenths of an inch, but I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'll end the video here. Once again, please subscribe, like, and subscribe, whatever. Do all that stuff. Oh. Here's my other piece. And then we'll, uh, I'll tackle this and then I'll be back with part two of the next steps of what I'm doing with these pieces.